Hi everybody, welcome to your beginner watercolor lesson number 10. Um, the reason you're not seeing my face right now <laughs> is because I just spilled water all over everything and um, it was a bit of a frantic hustle to get things cleaned up. So trust me, I'm here, it's me, it's Anne. Hello, I hope everyone is having a great day. Welcome to Art on the Creek. Welcome to the beginning watercolor lesson number 10. And welcome to my home studio in Parker, Colorado. Today, I have a fun surprise. Let me pull them out here on my little piece of paper. We're gonna paint some M&Ms and I thought it would be so fun and so simple. So if you have another candy that you like better than M&Ms, go grab some and if not, then we'll paint these and uh, we'll have some fun since it is the month of candy. <laughs> Fall's good for a lot of things, but for me, it's really good for Reese's peanut butter cups. And right now all I have is M&Ms, so that's what we're dealing with. And um, let's go paint these and see if we can get them painted before we want to eat them up, okay? <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> let's go. Alrighty, so I have these sitting on just some white paper and I was trying to get a, oh, just kind of a, an array. Now we're not gonna paint, we'll, we'll make them bigger, um, but I really like the shadows that are here and I don't know if you can see them from where you are on camera, but because there are several. Um, the strongest one that's coming in is the one from the window, which is this one down here. So that's probably the one that we'll use. If you wanted to do a secondary shadow, we can do that as well. I can show you how to do that. Um, so M&Ms, I got, I pulled ones out. I got one of each color and I got the ones that have the little M on it. That is going to be a fun time for us to use either a white gel pen like this or a fine point paint pen. And, uh, we've got that. We can also fill in some, some nice highlights with that. You can see there's one here and over here. So this is, it's, it's fun. It's a really good exercise with a lot to do with uh, getting shapes right, creating shadows, and making things look, hopefully, as 3D as we can. So I'm gonna set this here. Let me see if you can see that. Yes, good. I'll go up just a little bit. And what happened was, the reason I spilled my water is I used these uh, cu old cut up t-shirts. Uh, to blot things with instead of paper towels and um, sometimes I use paper towels too though but I have one typically underneath my water container because I uh, you know you always drip coming pulling the paintbrush out of it at least I do and I was <laughs> I was so excited to to get something that I could blot whatever I was painting because I wanted to take some of the color off and I was tugging and tugging and I didn't understand why it wasn't budging well it was sitting underneath the water jar and so rather than take a look at what was going on and really think about it I simply pulled harder spilled, spilled my entire jar of water um so it was it was an event <laughs> so if you if you get in that situation then well I just hope you don't I just hope you don't get in that situation we're using what we always use here uh we are using our Paul Rubens five by seven cold press paper you can use whatever you want whatever size of paper you want I just thought for uh beginner lessons or for doing something really quick and simple uh this size is really easy to deal with and because of its measurements you can trim it just a little and make it into a lovely greeting card so if that's something you want to do you can certainly do that. We are this time using our Paul Rubens set of watercolors. There are 24 colors in here. I really like them. Um, they do have a wonderful, wonderful vibrancy to them. And they're really decent watercolor. I really like them. They say that they're professional, but like I always say, if you're going to do something that's for a commission, save these for your own use. They're fun, they're bright. I have not done actual light fastness tests on these. Uh, apparently they are light fast. They do have light fastness ratings. They have pigment information. 
So, I mean, I trust the company, I like them, but if you're going to do something that you're gonna to sell to someone, then I would say use something with a, a paint that comes with a little more of, um, I wanna say pedigree, uh, you know, something like um, Daniel Smith or um, Windsor Newton Professional, M. Graham, something like that. So all of that aside, this is an affordable set. You don't have to use it though. If you wanna just grab something out of the school supply aisle, that is perfect for what we're doing here. So M&Ms, we're gonna start making circles, but they're more than just circles. There's a little bit of shape to them. So what we're gonna do, let's just start with the green one here. Make a circle there. And if circles are a little too intimidating for you, you can go ahead and use a template, but be, be very uh, happy that these aren't actual circles. So I'm gonna make my circles, but then I'm going to show you what we're going to do to give it some shape because we're looking at it from this angle here. So let's see here, let's put one, we'll put the yellow one about here. These we wanna all kind of make them the same size. If you've been uh, following along with these watercolor lessons, and I have a playlist that I can put right up here. Yeah, I think it'd be up here for you guys. It'll be in the top right-hand corner, a little card that you can click on. And that will take you to the playlist of all of the beginner watercolor lessons. Right now, this is the second series of 15, and uh, you don't need to do them in order. You don't need to be a beginner. These are just easy and fun to paint. Um, which I really like to do because if you just have a couple minutes set aside in your day or you were given a bonus half hour that is free and you weren't anticipating it, haha, then painting something is always fun to do. So I will provide a reference photo for this, but I'm not going to give you a, a line drawing um, simply because it's really very, very simple. So we're going to draw these circles first and we're drawing them very lightly. And now we want to get the shape of the M&M &M in. So this is just kind of our guide, right? So let's look at this green one here. So it's going to come kind of in front here. Now these are the lines that, that I want to kind of keep. So it comes in front there and then it has a little bit of shape to it underneath. So there's the green one. And when we get our highlights on it and everything, it'll make a lot more sense. So right now, just trust, like Caw the Snake, trust in me. All right, I promise I won't sing anymore. <laughs> we don't want these to have a straight edge. We want them to be very rounded. So this is really, they're the lines we're gonna keep, but it is kind of a guide still. So just stay with me here, folks. We'll get these all drawn. And this guy here. What is your favorite color of M&Ms? And mention in the comments, let's have some M&M talk here. I love M&M candies and I am of the era when the red used to be made from red dye number six, number three, I can't remember. But they found out it was a carcinogen and you know, that's not good. So they didn't make that the red candies for quite some time and they used to have a tan color. And I was so disappointed when uh, the red dye, number three or number six, whatever it was, when that red dye was uh, taken off the market, I was very disappointed because at that time, red was one of my favorite colors. And then we just had all these brown M&Ms and I really didn't like the brown ones at all. So they don't make the tan anymore. Um, and of course now you can get a complete array of colors and I bet you can get that tan if it's something that, uh, that you wanted to, to get for, for some reason. So how many of you have been to the big M&M store in Las Vegas? If I can find it, I'll try and put a picture up of uh, my husband and his brothers and my father-in-law when they went to the M&M store. That was a really fun trip. Um, and you know, you have all these acrylic pull things, <laughs> dispensers of candy, and you just put your bag under there and then you pull out however much of each color you want. Kind of like the Lego store does that too. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And you can also get M&Ms personalized. I saw a thing on uh, one of the social medias that you can get some Taylor Swift M&Ms if that's something that appeals to you. Um, you know, hey, there's just a lot you can do with M&Ms. We've used them for 
uh, the, the, uh, I was going to say bachelor party, but that's not right. The rehearsal dinner <laughs> for our son and his wife, when they got married, our, our middle son, Tyler and his wife, Liz, when they got married, we had a Bronco themed rehearsal dinner and we made M&Ms in uh, Bronco themes and we put their little picture on some M&Ms and the date of their, their wedding. We gave a little little bag of M&Ms to everybody. So that was a lot of fun. Um, well, let's start with the yellow one here. Now, these pencil lines, since it's yellow, I am going to use our kneaded eraser. And remember, to get it, your kneaded eraser started, you just play with it. Mine's kind of always in use and always being played. So I fiddle with it a lot when I'm thinking. It's just kind of my fidget spinner, only it's my kneaded eraser. So when you pull it like this, what it does is it cleans it and it gets it ready to use. So let's see here if we can get it to stretch. There we go. And then what you can do is just use it to blot up your pencil lines and it just makes them a little bit fainter. Now I can still see that. I don't know if you guys can, but I can still see that. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with the lightest yellow and no matter what set you're using, you probably have a lemon yellow. On this set here, I gotta get my glasses on so I can see what they call it. It's the permanent lemon yellow. There you go. Everybody has a different lighter yellow. You're gonna want to use the coolest one in your set here. So move this brush out of the way. I'm using the uh, number four round, by the way. So we're just filling in the entire outer circle. And if you can't see the lines, uh, we've gone all the way around this way. So this is the first pass. And now we're going to use the green. And I think, yeah, I like this green here, which is the tree green, they call it. Um, if you have a different set, it's probably a sap green that you're going to want to use. So once again, let's lighten these lines. Just kind of rock it on there a little bit. And we'll go ahead and put this in. I had a little bit of a flick there with my brush so we gotta make it just a tiny bit bigger and that's okay all right now let's do the orange one so we'll come up here and make that one a little bit lighter and the color that I'm going to use for the orange M&M is this one which is a cadmium red light and if you're not using this set again you undoubtedly have something very similar There we go. And now let's get the brown one in. And for that one, I honestly like this brown here, which is, they, they say it's a burnt sienna, the third one in from the end. It's not quite as red as most burnt siennas, but it's a nice color for chocolate, so I like using that one. So see, so far it couldn't be simple. It really kind of just looks like a twister board. Did you guys play twister when you were kids? I did. I loved that game. It was a fun party game. Uh, tried to play it in college. It was fun there as well. Let's see here. Um, I think since the blue is not quite ultramarine, I think... I think I'm gonna go with the cobalt blue on this one. This blue is just a slightly different than the ultramarine. There we go, that is just right. So I've asked you what your favorite color of M&Ms is. Have you ever gone to the M&M store in Las Vegas? I've asked you that question. There's probably others around. Um, what other M&M question can I ask you? If you could personalize your M&M, what would you have it say? Mine, I'd probably put my dog's picture on there. I'm not very creative, but I do love Leo. He's a good boy. Okay, so we're blotting off this last one here, and now red is going to be our last M&M, and for that one I want to use the warm red, 
which is the scarlet. So whatever warm red you have in your set will be great. Okay. So that is our first pass. And now, whoops, look what I did. I made a little bulge on the M&M. &M. Come back here, you. All right, now we're going to go in with the uh, same order. Let's hit the yellow one again. Now this time I'm going to take just a touch of the green and mix it in with the yellow. may not make sense right now, but it will because when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing that it kind of has a green cast to the shadow on the side. So very little green in there, just enough. And we're going to go around the back here in the front and kind of right there, just a thin, thin piece at this edge here. About like that. And this is where you're just going to want to look at the picture, zoom in, and kind of see where those shadows are. All right, and then for the same green, this time I'm going to add just a touch of cobalt blue to that green. So this is a sap green mixed with a little bit of cobalt blue, just to make a little bit of a darker green. There we go. And let's do the same thing. So back here we've got a little bit of a shadow here. And then underneath comes up this way. The shapes might be a little uh, strange, but that's okay. Whatever you see, that's what I want you to paint. And we're not going for, you know, real realism here. We're just trying to give these some dimension. And now for the orange. Let's see, we went into the uh, Cad Red Light for that one. So we'll go back in there. And this time I'm going to add just a touch of that burnt sienna to that. Just want that to be a little bit of a richer red. There we go. And that has a darker area down here. A little bit up here. And it comes up over the side here like that. All right. Now for the brown, we're going to go back into that burnt sienna. And this time I want to mix in the darkest brown that we have. And that is the uh, burned brown that they call it. Or uh, burnt umber if you don't have this set. Burnt sienna with just a touch of burnt umber added to it. And now we can add that down here. Leave a little space for that little highlight there. There we go. And now for the blue, we've got our cobalt. And let's mix a little bit of the uh, the sea blue with it. If you don't have that one, it's going to be your phthalo blue. All right, so come around here this way. And then back around the edge here. All right, so far so good. And now for the red, we're going to go back into that, uh, the red we were using before, which is a scarlet. And I'm going to mix in some of the burned brown or burnt umber with that. So we're going to get a nice, a nice dark brownish red with that. And let's see, we'll fill that in here, underneath this way. All 
All right, now what we want to do is to get this part completely dry. So if you don't have a heat tool, what you can do is just walk away from it. And that's always a fun thing to do. Get up and stretch, go get the mail, take your dog for a walk, whichever. All right, now for our third and final layer, we're gonna go back in and do another wash of the original color over all of these. So we wanna first go in the lemon yellow. Try to get it thin enough. There we are. And then the green, what's the sap green? Just a very thin wash over everything. And there are red. Excuse me, the orange. Let's do the orange. Be careful that you don't put too much water on because that will uh, af affect things a little bit. And I may have done that on the red one, but that's okay. Let's just keep going. Uh, what we're going to do is maybe see some cauliflower blooms there. And then if you like that, maybe that's a feature you can do intentionally. So, all right, here we go with the cobalt over the blue. You can see what we're doing is we're just kind of softening those lines where we put the shadows, making them very subtle. And finally, the brown will go over that in a wash of that burnt sienna, which was the third one in. There it is. All right. Done and done, and now we'll go ahead and get our heat tool again and make sure this is completely dry. Let's put our shadows on. So a shadow color. We want to be able to make a color out of something that we've mixed here already. And as we're looking at this, I can see a colorful shadow coming from this angle and then the gray shadow going this way. So let's start with that gray shadow. Let's start by mixing the cobalt blue and the browns that we have, and we'll make a nice gray. Now, when you make a shadow, what you need to remember is it is darkest up close to your subject. So what we're going to do is put a line right here. I'm trying to uh, replicate where that shadow, where it lies and what it looks like. So there's that one. Here's this one here. And the curve on these is a little bit sharper than the curve of the edge of the M&M. &M. And this one is smaller. If you need a smaller brush to do this, of course, you can grab one. And this right here got on the M&M &M just a little, so I'm going to just blot that off. And then just try and keep my hand a little more steady. That is hard for me. Whenever I get into a real detail situation, my hand does shake. So, yeah, not one for, not one for a lot of detail. What is your favorite trick-or-treat candy? Do you guys remember Zagnut bars? Oh, I love those and I like cowtails. For those of you who don't know, it's kind of a, a caramel with cream in the inside. And um, yeah, they were delicious. Let's see. What else? I just got a little bit of darkness on here. Let me clean that up a bit. Um, I, well, I love Snickers, I love Baby Ruth. You know, the problem is 
I rarely meet a candy that I don't like. Oh, you know which ones I don't like? Circus peanuts, not a fan. And I'm also not a fan of those, uh, the taffy that are wrapped in the black and orange wax paper. Mm -mm, nope, don't like those. I think they're supposed to be peanut butter, but they're, they're not, they're, they're just too sweet. They're not, they're not right. <laughs> now we're gonna take that same gray mix with the cobalt and the, uh, the grays, and let's just kind of make that secondary shadow. So this will come out here and come right there. There we go. And this one, I'm kind of doing these shadows in order of their darkness. So this is the medium shadow here. The first one we did was the darkest one. This one's the medium one. And then we'll go in and do the lightest one. There we go. And then here. I guess my favorite all time candy, like I said in the intro, is Reese's. Reese's peanut butter cups. The, the commercial when they first, when that candy first came out, your chocolate is in my peanut butter. What they would do is that someone was eating chocolate bar and someone ha was eating from a jar of peanut butter and they were walking along and then they collided and, oh, your chocolate's in my peanut butter. Oh, your peanut butter's in my chocolate. And then, uh, laughter would ensue and they would decide that they've created a great new flavor and luckily for you, the viewer, you don't need to run into someone and crash your snacks together. You can simply buy a Reese's. And then they had another one that was kind of a Wild West. These cards are marked. <laughs> they were playing poker. And uh, that, was the, that was the deal there. All right, I'm liking this so far. Let's very, very lightly now, we'll go in and do the final shadow. But first, we need to dry this again. Now, I want this to be very watery and I think I've got enough left and I just pulled orange into it and that's not what I want. So guess what? I've got to mix some more. Let's see, I've got cobalt blue up here with brown. There we go, that's perfect. You can mix the cobalt blue with any of your browns probably and end up with the right tone of gray. And I've just got a very, very watery mix. I want to keep this very light. And we'll come around here and do this one. So just very subtle. And if you hit your, uh, your M&M like that, like I did, Go ahead and blot that because you do need that to be a real clean edge. It's okay for some of the orange pigment to come out there, but you don't want that fuzzy edge with your M&M uh, because that will just, uh, you know, M&Ms don't have fuzzy edges. It'll make it look like something that's quite suspect out of the bottom of uh, your grandmother's purse. <laughs> My grandmother, she used to always have certs, which is a, a, a breath mint. And oh my gosh, I would love when she would offer us certs from her purse because my mother wouldn't buy them. She bought lifesavers for us. And did you know, candy trivia, did you know that if you get a wintergreen lifesaver and you uh, go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, turn off all the lights, and I say the bathroom because that's probably where you're gonna have a mirror and you can make it really dark. And in front of the mirror, bite down really hard um, on the candy, kind of with your mouth open, crunch it in the back of your molars, and it will spark. Don't know if you guys knew that, but that's a fun fact about Wintergreen Lifesavers. And yep, that was one of my childhood uh, games, was biting Lifesavers. So, you know, 60s were rough, guys. We didn't have anything to do. We made our own fun. <laughs> okay, I will also regale you here with a slideshow of some 
some of my Halloween costumes as a, a child. And in the comments, put, uh, put some of your, uh, your memories about Halloween. What were some of your fun trick-or-treat moments? Do I want to do that fourth shadow? Oh, you guys, I'm kind of thinking we should because it's really fun. Doesn't that look cute? <laughs> M&Ms are so delicious. You guys are going to think I'm pretty wacky today. So this last shadow, all of them, it definitely has the color of the candy in it. So what I'm referencing is this little shadow there where it it comes out and then this little point right here crosses this this guy so let's see if we can do this I'm gonna mix a little bit more of the gray there's some uh, cobalt and let's mix the burnt sienna with that there we go get back in there cobalt I'm trying to get it the same temperature and I want it very light again a very thin wash so for now, let's do this one here. And then while it's wet, we're gonna go into the cobalt, a very, very light wash of it, and just drop some in. Not a lot, just some. There we go. So now we're gonna do that again. Let's do that to the orange one. And then we'll go into our orange, very light wash, and we'll just drop some in. Okay, now for the red. There's the shadow. And now we'll go into our red, very light wash, and just drop some in. And I'm just dropping it right along the edge of the candy. All right, now for this green one, let's just jump up to the green one here. There we go, and now we'll go into a very light wash of that green. Drop some of it in. Perfect. Yellow. It's your turn, yellow M&M. &M. Okay, and now a little bit of yellow in there. How many of you uh, get trick-or-treaters? Where you live we get a lot actually we get quite a bit our neighborhood is pretty good about that um i've lived in neighborhoods before where we don't get a lot and i know that uh like my mother-in-law lives in a 55 plus community with uh everyone's got a town home so hardly anyone is trick-or-treating usually that's saved for the high school and younger set but in our neighborhood we have a lot of kids who trick-or-treat so it's a lot of fun and I love the costumes. Oh my gosh. There's nothing better than seeing a little girl or a little boy so excited when you recognize their costume. Oh, are you Paw Patrol? Oh, you're Thor. Oh, are you Princess Slaya? You know, it's just, it makes their day, makes me happy, makes them happy. I love Halloween. Okay, we are done with the shadows. Look how fun that looks. Now, we're going to make sure this is completely and totally dry because we're going to go in next with colored pencil. We're all done with our watercolors for now. Okay, so get any set of colored pencils that you have. And we want, let's start with the green one. This color is, what color is this? Yellow green. We'll see what this looks like. I'm going to accentuate the shadows. So basically coloring where we put in 
that uh, the shadow of the paint and then uh, or the paint that was darker rather and then along the edge on the bottom and I think I'm gonna look and see if they have a darker green I bet they do what's uh, what's the deal McNeil what's this one pine green there we go let's very lightly in case it's too dark now this is fine I'm just coloring very very lightly making tiny little strokes just kind of filling in where that darker paint was that we put down get that edge in there we go now let's try our orange M&M &M. that's a salmon -y color let's see what's there we go here's some orange That one might be a little too close to the color we're trying to get here. It's making a change though. I can definitely see it. Let's go with the red orange. Is that what this is? This is a red orange. Perfect. Now for the blue one, and I like this guy. This is a sky blue. Okay, and now we'll go in with a little bit darker blue. What's this one here? Just plain blue. Just plain old blue. When we're coloring this we just want to use very small strokes you can go in little hash marks or uh, little circular circular shapes but the advice I would give you is don't press too hard just try and keep it as light as you can and let's get out a yellow is this yellow golden yellow I don't know if this is showing up on camera, but um, you'll be able to see on the photo on the end. What this is doing is it's really bringing out these uh, these colors and it's kind of putting a bit of a shine on it. So that really makes it kind of fun. And of course it gives it a little bit of texture. Uh, we want a little bit of a darker yellow. Let's see. All right, Crayola, help me out here. Bronze yellow. Let's try that one. Yes, bronze yellow. Perhaps on the yellow one you can really see it the best this effect 
of the colored pencil. Okay, now we need brown, brown, brown. Here's a couple of browns. This is regular brown. Let's just do that one first. Just lightly going over where we painted the darker shade. And then we'll come in with our darker colored pencil. And this one is called dark brown. And we'll just kind of define a few parts here. This would be the bottom portion of it. There we go. Okay, now finally the red. Okay, we want to make sure we get the right reds here because I don't want anything that's too cool. Um, mahogany. mahogany. That might be a little bit dark. I just want to start with plain red. Here we go, red. And now for the mahogany. And that'll darken that up nicely. All right, now for the really fun part. Cleaning up the mess. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Alrighty, now we're going to put in the highlights. And I am going to start with this pen here and let's see how it works. If it fails us, then we'll go to the paint pen. But let's start by putting the M's on, shall we? Uh, let's see, we're going to have this little point here and then it comes up and down. There's our first M. I might zoom in a little bit for this part so that you guys can get a real close-up look of what's happening. This M is upside down. So don't really think of it as an M, it's just shapes. And some of them are kind of worn off. That's fine too. Like this one here. This one's missing its little tail on the left side. Put a little dot over there. And let's see, this one we can barely see, so I'm just going to pretend it's going this way. I honestly don't know what it is, but I don't want to pick it up and move it. So there's that one. And then the last one, oh my gosh, I can't see it at all. This one I am going to move towards me. M and M. Ah, see that? It's missing the final little M. So let's make this one go upside down as well. There. Now for our M&Ms that have the white highlights on them. Now these are fun to do. So we're gonna just do a little, we'll start with the orange one here. We'll do a little circle right here, one here, and one here. Same with the blue guy. And the red one. And now the 
brown one. The green. And the yellow. And even though you can't really see it, it is important to go ahead and put them in there. And there you go, my friends. M&Ms, we have M&Ms. Look at that. That turned out so fun and so cute. And I know this one was a little bit longer, but I wanted it to be full length, full time, real time, blah, blah, for you guys. So without further ado, happy October, happy candy month, happy trick or treating. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me with this beginner watercolor lesson. Let's go ahead and sign our work. We don't want to forget to do that. Always recommend that you sign your work, at least with your first name or initials and the month and the year, because that way you can definitely remember where you were at this point in your process. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye now.